Welcome to the CWA Radio Network. You're listening to Amusing, hosted by me, Heather Randall. What if every thought is deeper than a daydream? What if it's a seedling from our Heavenly Father, our one true muse, pointing us to something we need to know? Let's embrace the freedom to wonder, take the invitation to explore, and learn everything he has to teach us in this amazing journey of life. Let's get this show started. Hello and happy Friday. You're listening to episode two of Amusing. Today, I'm, before we start, I'm going to give you some foundation. Um, I want to give you some behind the scenes information that will help you to better understand me and the intent that I have for this show. So as I expressed in my intro, I'm a compulsive dreamer and a thought chaser. I thirst for ideas and I quench my thirst with truth through God's word. I truly believe that God is talking to us all the time, but we are sometimes too busy, too tired, too something to listen. It's not some grandiose booming voice I'm talking about. For me, it's a simple whisper to my heart and it usually starts out in the strangest way. Some would probably call it a distraction or a daydream, but I think it's more. It's from these quote distractions that I get my episode teachings. So first let me give you some personal background. I've been married for 17 years to my hubby Stan. We have four children ages 16, 14, 12, and our youngest is almost 11. I'm a sold out, unashamed follower of Jesus. I was saved at age 8 in Sunday school. I grew up Assemblies of God, and though I'm not in that denomination anymore, I have great respect for my religious heritage And anyone who spoke biblical truth to me through the years is gold to me. I'm spirit-filled. I'm also Torah observant. That basically means that I respect biblical law, our Hebraic heritage, and the biblical feasts and festivals. Not out of legalism, but out of obedience. If you don't, I won't judge you. I'm not here to condemn anyone. And honestly, I just want to serve my king. One of the ways that I do this is through my company, Christian Women Affiliate. The CWA Radio Network is a product of that company. You see, though I'm not mainstream, as some might say, I still consider myself Christian. Doesn't it simply mean Christ follower? I will always be that, and I hope that that can be the foundation that we both agree on. Anyway, you need to know all this because, as you listen to my show, you may sometimes hear me say Yeshua, which is just the Hebrew name of Jesus, or Yahweh, which is God's holy name. I also say Abba sometimes, which just means Daddy. I'm an only child, and my earthly father and my heavenly father are together now. So calling God Daddy is an honor I give, not a disrespect. He has taken on the role of father in my life, and that's just the relationship that we have. So now to the story. My husband has a ministry to children, and our family is very active in it. He's also an elder in our church, and he teaches the children a brief lesson before the congregation every week. This last week, he was teaching the children about how Yeshua, Jesus, is above all else. He explained that there are shadows of him, creation, the Bible, even we can be like a shadow of him. But he will always be greater. Now my husband said more, I'm sure, but that, that's where the seed was planted. That idea was the first whisper in my heart and in my mind and it was already taking root and growing and taking on shape from that moment. Later during the main service the rabbi, that's just what we call our main teacher or pastor, said humanity has one tie to the earth because Adam is formed from the dust of the ground but there is another tie. That tie is to Yahweh's image and likeness. He went on to explain that the Hebrew words for image and likeness refer to stature, shadow, and form. And there was that word again, shadow. Now when God is trying to speak to you in any way, he will use more than one um, opportunity. So there was my second confirmation that God is trying to get my attention about something. And that word shadow was almost highlighted to me. Sounds funny that a shadow was highlighted, but you get what I'm saying. So that was the seed that has germinated into this lesson. Sometimes it's a teaching I hear, sometimes it's a song, sometimes it's a thought that I just know is divine. 
wherever that seed originates, it's God that grows it up in my mind and develops it into a personal lesson or public teaching. You probably have this happen to you all the time. You might not be hyper aware of it as I am, but I hope through listening to this show week after week that this will become a habit that you have in your own life where you hear God and then you apply those hints that he gives you, those little, those little teasing words or ideas, and you study and you learn and you grow personally through that. So here's what happens. He stirs this up in my mind and in my memory. He pairs it with imagery and he lures me to his word for confirmation and depth. I always need confirmation, and so do you, because ideas don't always come from God, and we understand this, right? But those God ideas, they're always rooted in Scripture, and so I can find them there, and I can confirm what he's already showing me. Now, I said imagery. He gives me imagery. So let's play some word, okay? If I say peanut butter, you think probably jelly, right? What do you imagine when you hear the word shadow? Well, my childlike heart goes straight to Peter Pan. For me, there's no other association. I just see that goofy fairy boy and poor Wendy trying to sew his stubborn shadow to his little brown shoes. That shadow may very well be the worst example of a shadow that exists. It runs away, fights its master, and is desperate for detachment. It's rebellious, opportunistic, a polluted picture of Peter Pan's character. Kind of like us. If we are meant to be God's shadow or likeness, which we are because scripture says we are, then wouldn't you agree that many of us would look a lot like that wild shadow of Peter Pan's? Let's look at some scripture. Genesis 1.26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Humanity was made to reflect the likeness of God for the purpose of ruling over creation. We were destined to be kings and queens. Unfortunately, sin killed that plan. And now Satan himself rules over the earth. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 confirms this, saying, In whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Through sin, that rebel nature creeped into humanity. And humankind began to fight to be free of the beautiful gift of being God's shadow. In case we aren't stubborn enough, the enemy steps in and tries actively to blind us to God's love in an attempt to distort our likeness. There was another line my rabbi said this past week, and that's worth noting here. He said the problem is the paradigm, not the relationship. I could apply this to a million different topics. But let's but talking about this topic, let's think about how that applies. You see, here on earth, we think about shadow shadows, and when we think about shadows, what do we think about? What's that association? It's usually the sun. The shadow moves in front or behind us based on our position in relation to the sun. So the sun is something natural to think about when you think of a shadow. Peter Pan's shadow The image of our shadow always connects at our feet, the ground, the end of us. That is the physical connection point, not the spiritual connection point. All right, buckle up. I'm going to get deep. Can you go with me? When we come to the end of ourselves, we surrender our need for control and are willing to follow after God. At this point, we take on his likeness. We don't fight the role of shadow And through this, our paradigm shifts. Now see, the paradigm was the problem, not the relationship. So when that paradigm shifts, that gives us better opportunity to understand and to connect. So when we don't fight the role of shadow, our paradigm shifts and it corrects. And then our spiritual connection point takes place. 
the light of the world at that point, at the point of our decision and our submission to just be his shadow, at that moment, the light of the world is at our right side. Now this changes everything in how we present to the world. Yes, we are tied physically in the natural at our feet, as is all mankind, whether they fight it or not. Interesting to note that, scripturally speaking, feet represent direction and the path. Our path is tied to wherever he goes. We can reject him and his likeness. We can sever the tie and go our own way as a rebellious shadow. But he will do everything he can to hunt us down and reconnect because it is his desire that none should perish. But that's the physical. The promise available to all humanity should we accept it. Spiritually, though, he longs for a deeper connection. When we accept him, we become aware of another point of connection. Scripture shows that we are also tied at our right hand. So let me read some scripture to cement that in. Psalm 121.5 says, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. Psalm 16.8 says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Psalm 110 verse 5 says, The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day of his wrath. Now in these first three scriptures, we see God at our right hand. And then let's go on to Psalm 63 verse 8. And that says, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Now we're talking about his right hand. Let's keep going. Isaiah 41 13 says, For I the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Now in this scripture, he's holding our right hand with his right hand. How is this possible that he would hold our right hand and be at our right hand? We'll get there in a, mo a moment. First, Isaiah 49 2. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has concealed me. And he has also made me a select arrow. He has hidden me in his quiver. Psalm 36, 7 says, How precious is your loving kindness, O God, and the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Think about this. Where are wings at? The arm or hand on a bird, right? So if you are under his wing, you are wrapped in his arm under his hand. Let's go back to the question that I asked because there is a confusing point here. If he is at our right hand and we are connected, it's natural to think of holding hands. I can't hold my husband's right hand with my right hand. It's unnatural. The fingers don't line up and we'd be a tangled mess. So how can we be under his right hand and at our right side or at our right hand at the same time? That goes back to my husband's lesson. Yeshua is above all. My right hand is a shadow of his right hand. So try this. Hold your spouse's right hand to right hand. There are three directions that it works. Face to face, shaking hands, that's the introduction. Him in front of me, with me holding his hand from behind, which is a following position or me in front and him holding my hand from behind, a protective position. There is no side-by-side -side equal position with God. If you try for this, you will be tangled up in deception. Philippians 2, 5 through 7 says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. So, instead of simply, instead of trying to be side by side in some kind of equality with God, throw that idea out. Instead, simply face him in humility. Agree to follow, and allow him to protect you when the trials come. Then the problem of your paradigm will be corrected, and you can be positioned for right relationship. 
this is all kind of ph philosophical and heavy, but I want to dig even deeper. Let's look at the crucifixion. Imagine Yeshua on the stake. There he is with the crown of thorns on his head. Thorns being a symbol of the consequences of sin. He's beaten and torn. He's pierced. Where? His hands and his feet. This is no coincidence. His hands and feet, the point of our connection, is the point of his piercing. Why? So he could fulfill scripture, honor covenant, and restore our likeness by killing death's hold on us and redeeming us from the curses of sin that we brought upon ourselves. This piercing was yet another attempt of the enemy to separate us from his likeness and to destroy our hope through his brutal death. But he is above all. Nothing could hold him, not even death, and his love is so vast that it will go on, on and on to any lengths to preserve our connection. We must still be his shadow, but I think we must also become his Wendy. We must purpose to restore those rebel shadows, affixing them to the path of God, holding them in place through faith and prayer so that they too can have him at their right hand and know him in a personal way through submission. Oh no. Oops, stop the show. I just said that dirty word. Submission. It felt like an ugly word 17 years ago when it came up in my pre-marriage counseling. And it seems, by worldly standards, even uglier today. Yet it is necessary and life-changing and an ultimate act of love that can't be faked or forced. Submission is a choice. Either you submit to him or you don't. There's no middle ground. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So at this point, I want to ask you to consider some things. And I'll pray that he uses this seed and finishes out this teaching within you, directing you toward personal application. I want you to ask yourself, Am I walking in his shadow? Am I struggling to submit to him? Am I fighting him? I imagine God using Peter Pan's line. Stop playing and help me find my shadow. Shadow, shadow. Our Heavenly Father is seeking out the lost. Can you hear him? He wants restoration. He wants your family, your friends, your co-workers, you. Ask yourself, am I acti actively attempting to restore those lost shadows that have strayed away from God? This is so heavy on my heart. You see, someday Yeshua will return, and I hope that I can answer him, just like Wendy did Peter Pan. She said, I knew you'd come back. I saved your shadow for you. Oh, I do hope it isn't rumpled. You know, you look exactly the way I thought you would. A little taller, perhaps. And that brings our episode to a close. But as Jan Barry wrote, Never say goodbye, because goodbye means going away, and going away means forgetting. May you never forget the beautiful way our Savior has pursued you. See you next week. Be blessed.